This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. My name is Gordon Rivero and I'm a solution consultant for PrintShop Pro. And prior to working with UDU Business Solutions, I have managed a college implant for 20 years. I am a firm believer that the ability to accurately price print equipment and services in PrintShop Pro is key to the success of the implant. What I would like to go over today is a cost building worksheet that we have developed at EDU Business Solutions that could assist your implant in computing accurate budgeted hour rates and impression charges for your print equipment and services. First, knowing how your implant is funded is key. Typically, we see four funding models for implants. Number one being cost neutral. The implants that must recoup all costs incurred in the course of doing business but are not required to produce a profit. Number two is fully funded. These are implants that are fully funded by the parent organization and as such have little responsibility recouping actual costs of operation or being held accountable for, 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 for performance. Number three is partially funded. These are implants with the funding model that is a hybrid of cost neutral and fully funded. Funding comes from both the parent organization and other revenue streams, such as grants, student printing, fleet, or insourcing. Number four are self-funded implants. These are implants that not only have to recoup operational costs, but also are, can make a profit. So these are much more like commercial um, print shops. In reality, every implant is unique and has different or various funding sources. Some, some implants might not have a need to spend time figuring out pricing its products and services as the funding is provided with no need to supply data that provides fiscal accountability. However, some implants have to recap, have to capture some or all of their costs or capture all costs plus add a margin for profit for recapitalization, et cetera. Once we have located our revenue streams, we can define how we are funded and how we want to price our products. If you do not know how your implant is funded, try answering these questions. If you wanted to hire a new position, where would those funds come from? If you wanted to purchase a new piece of equipment or software, not replace, where would you, where would you find those funds? And number three, do you have access to a source of funding that is liquid? If the answer to one or two is to request funding and permission from the parent organization, then your implant is either fully funded or partially funded. If you can hire at will with funds derived from operational revenue, then your implant is most likely cost neutral or self-funded. If your answer to number three is yes, then the implant is most likely partially funded, cost neutral or self-funded. Most implants that are fully funded do not have revenue generated accounts or cash on hand. So we're going to go over today right now the budgetly hour rates. If you remember when the offset was king, before digital everything was the norm, pricing equipment or cost centers was based on the time utilized on that resource. The BHR is an hourly cost that captured the cost of the equipment, how much of the physical footprint the equipment took up in the facility, how much energy it consumed, and the costs of the operator who ran the equipment. The BHR is typically used to price a resource that does not have a per piece throughput. The BHR uses the price per hour for the print, print cost centers, such as offset, uh, folders, cutters, etc., for estimating and invoicing print jobs. The actual time that the resource is in operation is called utilization. Idle time and employee breaks are subtracted from the utilization time in 24 hour intervals. For example, a guillotine cutter might be only used for six hours during the day, while the other 18 are what we would call standby time. It is important to price that resource on when it's available for production and not include time for utilization when the resource is not normally used, like when the shop is closed or is idle because of warm up or employee breaks. Each implant will have different criteria for developing their BHRs. Some may not charge facility or power costs. Some, some may not charge labor. Some may charge for everything. 
How the BHR is computed is determined and how the implant is funded. To fine tune the BHR calculations, the utilization and overhead percentage figures are variables that can be adjusted for fine tuning pricing as the other costs are pretty much fixed. BHR figures can be used to determine setup costs for per piece throughput resources like folders, increasers, and cutters in PSP, as we will go over in a little bit. Once a BHR is calculated, it can be broken down into smaller time intervals to price the resource based on the estimated time it takes to complete the job on the resource for the quantity order. The more the quantity, the longer it utilizes the resource. In the worksheet, the BHR does not include maintenance or equipment consumables like the impression charge does. So if you want to include those costs, then you would include them in your final BHR calculation as well as any overhead markup. Here is one BHR pricing scenario. Our implant is cost neutral, so we need to capture actual operational costs, but however, with no markup. The reason we are using the BHR for this resource is because the unit of measure is per 100 or in a bundle and not per piece. It is a guillotine cutter. In the, in the fixed price schedule for this finished pricing, we calculated that our guillotine cutter is 93 cents per minute. And we figured it takes one minute of the operator time to cut one bundle of 100 pieces. That will be the price per cut. So if the, fig, if the quantity order is 1,000, then the cost per cutting would be 0.93 times 10, which was $9.30. We also figured that it takes two minutes of setting up the cutter for each job so that the one-time fee of 186, which is 93 cents times two, is charged per job no matter what the quantity is ordered, and then the minimum click charge is 0.93. The second way to price a resource is with an impression charge or a click charge. The impression charge is used to price a resource that has a per piece throughput, for example, a digital toner press, a white format press, a folder, saddle stitcher, but it does not necessarily need to be a printed impression. That is why we also call it a click charge. Like a turnstile at a subway station or a gear in a wheel, an individual event registers an action. Thus, we can use impression or click charges for non-printing equipment like pre-press, bindery, mailroom, etc. as long as we want to price the resource on a per piece basis. The impression charge is the production cost of one pass through a resource. The best use is to price a resource that has a per piece throughput, for example, the digital toner press of the wide format, a folder, saddle stitcher, etc. The cost center for the impression costs consists of equipment, the lease or purchase price, the click charge for consumables and our maintenance. It does not need to be formal contract charge. It can be estimated if there is no, there is no contract. A facility cost of the equipment, the power cost, and the direct labor costs associated with the equipment. The terminal or the end outputs for the impression charge are either all-inclusive or equipment maintenance only. The all-inclusive calculation allows for the addition of a percentage markup for overhead or to cover other expenses, or is simply as a buffer to cover the variability of demand. The equipment maintenance only calculation covers just the basic cost of the purchase and the consumables of the equipment. On this screenshot, we can see that we would input the impression charge calculation in the equipment color volume port pricing portion of PrintShop Pro. And when you determine impression charges, we can include all charges called all-inclusive or recover costs for lease and maintenance only. So when you're pricing a resource with the impression calculation, May want use, you may want to use the all-inclusive charge if your implant is self-funded or cost-neutral and use the lease and maintenance charge costs only if your implant is partially or fully funded. Under the bindery, bindery details in PrintShop Pro, we can input our pricing derived from the cost building worksheet using both the BHR and impression calculations. The price per bindery is derived from the impression calculation and then the bindery setup charge is derived from the BHR calculation. In the fixed price schedule, 
portion of Print Shop Pro, we can use the BHR and the impression calculations for finishing resources using the most appropriate cost model. If we are pricing a resource whose unit of measure is each sheet, then we might want to use the impression piece for the, prop, for the price per and the BHR price for the setup fees. If the equipment or service is time-based only, then we would want to most likely use the BHR calculation. We just need to determine how long it takes to complete the task and what unit of measurement is the basis for the charge. So here is a screenshot of the actual Print Shop Pro cost building worksheet, which is available for you to download and do your own calculations. Like the old great taste, less filling debate, we realize that pricing strategy is subjective. Many of us have our set ways and how we develop pricing. However, if you do not have a method to determine a BHR or impression charges, then this cost building worksheet can get you started on developing costs for your equipment and cost center charges. The purpose of this worksheet is to provide an implant manager a helpful tool to analyze their operational costs so they can be more confident on pricing the output of their equipment. Since data and impression estimates are inputted by you, the customer, EDU business solutions cannot be held liable for incorrect calculations or misuse. As such, this worksheet should be used for educational purposes only. We do recommend that you analyze regularly the sales by equipment in the active orders data page so you can verify that what you're charging is recovering costs and getting where you want to be. Every implant has a unique funding model, so use this as a starting point to build your own cost calculation worksheet. When you determine your own percentage of a markup that addresses the cost you need to account for, you might want to look at a global percentage for overhead profit based on years of data, um, or you can use the cost to purchase equipment of a resource spread out over years of intended use or lease and add that to the impression charges. And you also can add the indirect labor costs associated with that resource, which is all your CSRs, your student workers, your accounts receivable, all that, which is not included in your other calculations. We recommend that you regularly verify your pricing in Print Shop Pro to confirm that it's covering costs plus achievement of profit that is applicable to your pricing strategy. In this scenario, we have redacted some of the information from an actual customer, but we want to show you how we can determine if a pricing is being accurate. So we can verify the accuracy of our pricing by regularly examining the data derived from the active orders slash number dollar sales slash print slash dollar by equipment filter. In this screenshot, for the fiscal year of 2021-22, we billed $77,548 for our black and white impressions on the VP140 with a total click of 1,073,518 impressions for a total of 6,386 jobs or 532 jobs per month. This tells us for the fiscal year of 21-22, our impression charge for the BP, BP140 yielded $77,548 divided by 1,773,518 impressions for a total cost of 0 0.07 per impression. Our impression charge for this device is $0.03. Cents. So this confirms that our pricing is covering costs as well as giving us a comfortable cushion of $0.04 cents per impression for overhead, recapitalization, and profit, etc. And while four cents might per impression uh, for an impression buffer might seem high, when you average this over for multiple years, it might be actually too low, or it might be right, just right. So you take this number into account when you're examining your pricing with your competitors, as well as you want to provide the best pricing while achieving your financial goals. So we can, rerun, we can rerun this report weekly, monthly, yearly, or multiple years to examine our pricing on the device. Remember to start with your best estimate using this cost building worksheet and then adjust in small increments to fine tune, much like the Fed does with interest rates. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one discussion and overview of the cost building worksheet using data actually derived from your implant, please email me to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting. It is free for, for our Print Shop Pro customers. My email is grivera at edubusinesssolutions.com. I hope you find the cost building worksheet helpful for your implant. Thank you for your time.